Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a couple of videos today talking about the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. Happy uh, Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Yeah, we're going to have a eulogy for the comic book industry. But I do want to say Happy Memorial Day to everyone out there that's in America. Absolutely. And to, to all the veterans and those who have served and those who have not, have not made it. Yeah. So yeah. we'll take a moment to, to thank everybody. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so let's let's take a moment to talk about the comic book industry. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to talk about Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, who is a, a controversial comic book writer, coming out and, and basically throwing shade at Marvel, uh, Marvel's treatment of comic book creators, uh, because now he's with DC, so he can... Yeah, now he can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about that and the shocking realization... <laughs> shocking quotes. Uh, the shocking realization from uh, Mark Miller that that most comic book customers are not on Twitter. Oh, shocker. It's, it's almost like other people have been saying that for a long time. I wonder who that could be. Yeah. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 100. We're almost 192,000. Woohoo! We're getting Woo so close yeah. to 200. We are. So we're inching up there. Uh, awesome. So thank you for the support. Yeah. So this, you kicked it over to me yesterday, and you were kind mm -hmm. of busy yesterday, so we didn't, didn't cover it. But uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, who wrote Black Panther, wrote uh, Captain America. He's he's writing, I guess, the new Black Superman movie for uh, right, DC. Right, right, yeah. you know, because, you know, obviously. He's an activist turned journalist turned comic book writer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, polarizing, polarizing Meanwhile, figure. Meanwhile, IGN's trying to be gaming reviewers turned political writers. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, everybody, everybody thinks they're working for the New York Times, and the New York Times isn't even the New York Times anymore. Yeah, I know, but, right? But uh, yeah, so he's had an interesting, uh, interesting career trajectory. I think he worked for the Atlantic for a while, and then he wound up uh, working in comic books. And uh, it, it is really interesting because he is pointing out some things that a lot of people have been saying, but they're not Ta-Nehisi Coates. Uh, basically, basically that corporate owned comic book publishers don't really care a whole lot for the individuals who create the properties that they make multi-billion dollar movies out of. You don't say! Shocker! I had no idea. It's not like we've been saying this for quite a while now or anything. And the really interesting thing about this is, again, he's turning on Disney-owned Marvel because he's not working for Disney-owned Marvel at this point, I don't think. He's working for DC, but DC is so up in the air now because they're owned by Warner Media, and of course they're merging with Discovery. And they and, might be sold to somebody else. And they might get sold off too. So <laughs> I'm, If it goes away, some people think Disney might own them too. Yeah, so I'm just <laughs> no, saying. I don't uh, think it's going to go that way. But. I don't think so. Um, but I'm just saying, like, it's really interesting to see how quickly, uh, you know, he kind of turns on that publisher. But, you know, he, he is, in this case, I will give him props. He's actually, he is actually speaking right. the truth. This because we've been saying years. this. Yeah. Other people have been saying this. Uh, people that are working in the industry have been saying this for quite, quite a while. Yeah. Um, so this is a Gizmodo who got from Polygon. Uh, and former, see how see how this works. Former IO9 senior writer Evan Narcissus, <laughs> no Narcis, <laughs> um, uh, interviewed Coates uh, and expressed the deep debt he feels to Marvel for putting him in a position to tell Black Panther stories. But, but there's always a but. Coates also explained how he's cognizant of how the entertainment industry turns these stories into multi-billion dollar multimedia franchises, and they're not supportive of the creators behind the comics. Yep. Uh, that is true. I'm not talking about myself here because I feel like I'm somebody who is fortunate in the sense that I've been able to make a living in all kinds of other ways. Uh, Coates said, but there are people who make their living off of comic books. There are. I, yeah, that's true. Well, see, here's the difference. This is this is a huge difference, I think, in the comic book industry now versus even 10 or 20 years ago. And why we see so many people getting into comics from other industries because comics is kind of a play thing. Well, I think a lot of people try to use this to try to get themselves a deal for like movies or TV. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a stepping stone to getting a Hollywood deal. And, you know, Coates has has connections in Hollywood. He's doing, you know, the Superman movie now. Uh, he's got books out there. He's making money on those. So to him, like the comic, the comic book thing is probably just gravy money. Mm -hmm. But there are people who actually make a living in comics and they do get screwed over by these corporations. Right, all the time, which we have said many, many times. Um, I wish that Marvel found a better way to compensate the creators who helped make 
Black Panther, Black Panther. I wish they found better ways to compensate the folks who made Captain America, Captain America. But now, that, that, well, you have to understand, though, the people that made Captain America, Captain America don't aren't the ones who are doing that kind of doing Captain America and stuff now. Yeah, they're dead. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, he's not that Ed, Bru uh, Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting, uh, the death of Captain America storyline, which is what's right. being used I'm for. I'm just saying, but you can't say they're making Captain America, Captain America now because that's not true. Right. No, you're not allowed to. And actually his his uh, coats Captain America, as I recall, I didn't read the run, but I heard it was uh, very politically charged. Oh, oh sure. shocker. Who I'm would sure. thunk it? But it's Captain America. Don't you say. Know. Um, Anyway, uh, talking about uh, Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting and the death of Captain America and how that led to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. And uh, basically said that they're not getting paid very well. And I think it was Ed Brubaker said he can't even get a phone call uh, back from Disney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said he's hearing from Ed Brubaker. He can't even get in contact with with anybody at Disney, I, oh, it's I don't not just love that. him. I mean, we use this all the time. We've seen it with like you know, author, other authors. We've seen it with people that you know, like the Predator people. They sent them notice that they were going to you know take it back, and they sent it to them in 2016, and then again and or again later on, and, and they wouldn't respond to it. Yeah, you know, this is typical. This is very typical, and a lot of it, you know, especially when you work your way up the food chain at a company like Disney, is that there's so much consolidation. That you don't even know who you're dealing with anymore. That's true. You know, um, like the person that, that might have loved your pitch or loved whatever, they could be out the door and they won't even tell you until mm -hmm. you find out. You find out in a, a trade publication later that so-and-so left Heck, for... Half the time they find out they're gone in a trade publication yeah. later. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is. Now, he said he had a good experience with his editors. But he said the corporate side of this, though, mm -hmm. the corporate side is not pretty. It's but not... I'm telling you. Yep. It's not pretty at all. How you treat people who create the basis for this. I don't love it. This has been... God, this is so ooh, interesting. Um, that's the word I'm going to use is interesting because this this conversation has been happening for decades. Yep. Uh, going back to the kids who created Superman, they signed away their rights by signing the check mm -hmm. to Superman. And that battle, as I understand, is still going on. Uh, Siegel and Schuster, it's still going on with their families. That, that the mainstream comic book industry has treated people like dog shit for decades. This is what led to Image Comics. You know, a lot of guys from Marvel, they were making Marvel all kinds of money, bigger, bigger, way bigger dollar amounts back in the 90s. And they're like, we're not getting our fair share. We don't feel like we're getting our fair share. So we're going to go do our own thing. Well, it's not just in comics, it's in everything. I mean, that's why we say be careful who you sell your pitches to, because you might end up, a lot of people end up selling the rights away and then they can do what, they can come back three years later, kick you to the curb and do whatever they want with it. I yeah. mean, because they have the money, they have the power. So they know that you were desperate to get in there and you'll do whatever they ask to get it, get the opportunity. That's the problem. And it's not, it's no different in comics. Yeah. And, and this is why we see, you know, everybody complains about low page rates. They complain you about. You accepted it. You accept it. You know the deal. You know, and a lot of people, they work for next to nothing, you know, with their graphic novel pitches or whatever, because they think eventually there's going to be a payoff. There's going to be a Hollywood pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, mm -hmm. you know, and naively, I thought that at one point in time, too. But it's a lot more complicated. And some people, they wind up doing the comic books for a very long time. Look at Todd McFarlane. Now, he's had... Uh, you know, he's had all kinds of multimedia deals and stuff, but primarily, like, he never stopped doing Spawn as a comic book. He spun it off into different things. People work in comics thinking that there's going to be a payday, so they take these ridiculously low page rates. We've heard about, and we're going to do a video later on, on Boom Studios, but we've heard about people taking $20 page rates, right. uh, working for next to nothing, probably thinking at some point in time it's going to pay off and they're going to, you know, Hollywood's going to come knocking. They don't ever reward you. I mean, it's very rare that they do. If they you, you agree to that, that's probably what you're stuck at, uh, unless you move someplace else that's willing to pay you more. Or you start your own thing. Yes. I mean, there are publishers out there. They're usually smaller publishers that do take care of their people. I'm talking about the bigger ones. Though. Yeah. Um, but you know, Disney as a corporation, Warner Media as a corporation, they're not necessarily the companies uh, that take care of you. So just you know, be careful, I guess, if you're working comics. I just think it's funny that we've got people now like, wow, man, the comic book, the mainstream comic book industry is kind of shitty, isn't it? I know, and it's like, what? No, no kidding. We've been saying, and when we said it originally. Friends blocked us. People we actually knew in person blocked us because we were they, we were negative and they they labeled us Comicsgate, even though we aren't Comicsgate. 
<sighs> so speaking of eye-opening situations, uh, and this is this is funny too. This is Mark Miller, who's one of the biggest names in comics right now. He's mm -hmm. he has been successful. He got his his Hollywood deal, multiple Hollywood deals. So again, he's not making money necessarily off the the books so much as he is these Hollywood deals or book sales tied into his stuff getting getting picked up. He's shocked. Shocked. Yeah, you know, we're not surprised by this at all. Anybody who watches this channel isn't surprised by this at all, but he's shocked. Shocked to hear. It's amazing. It's an amazing stat I heard yesterday. Only 10% of comic buyers have a Twitter account. No shit, you don't say. And only half of those accounts are actually active. Thus, 95% of the comic book audience is not on Twitter, which must be mind blowing for the company marketing departments. No, no, or half the accounts are, are sock puppet accounts. Could go either way. So this is what we talk about when we're we're like, you're you're marketing to Twitter. These companies market to Twitter, and their their customers are not on Twitter. So they 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 create these entire marketing campaigns. They they have books come out that they're like, oh, Twitter's gonna love this book because of X Y Z representation yeah, we put into it yeah. we pander to it and it's only like five percent of your your actual paying customer base is on twitter yeah and that, obviously because you're on twitter a lot of the comic fans that are on twitter they're longtime fans don't go on twitter because they get harassed as soon as they go on twitter because they don't automatically love every change that they do and you're not allowed to have an opinion unless it goes along with with the, you know the company um but i've been saying this forever for everything it's like the vast majority of people are not on twitter yeah, they're just not, and it's like you know, I, we've said this how many times? And it's in, in general, these companies keep pandering with Twitter, and uh, they're 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 not hitting the audience. They're not listening to. They're not actually reaching their audience. What they're listening to are these these extremists on Twitter who aren't representative of their audience. And then they're like, "Why are we losing money? I don't understand it. I thought everybody loved this. Why are we not? Why aren't they selling? Twitter loved it because your audience isn't on Twitter." But that hashtag was trending. It, it must. We're, that means we're going to sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of copies. Well, you can fake trending hashtags oh, yeah, too, and yeah. if half those are sock puppet accounts too. Yep. Um, so this is interesting. Then uh, Chris Arant, who is uh, with Newsarama, I believe, he said for the general public, Twitter says about twenty percent of English speaking countries have Twitter accounts. Bullshit. Uh, weird stat. Where'd you get that from? Reality. A uh, good pal of mine from marketing at one of the big two. I was really surprised by this too. He said, even on the slide from their accounting and their parent company deep dives and makes little impact on units, which is fascinating. Basically, they're learning slowly yeah. not to cater to Twitter. And it doesn't matter if Twitter tries to cancel somebody. It doesn't matter if Twitter finds a comic problematic. If the general public doesn't give a shit. They don't spend the money. If you keep changing things to, to, to appease activists on Twitter, you're already talking a small percentage of the small percentage on Twitter. Like, there's already not many people who have an account. And of that account, there's a very small percentage of them that are these, are these far, far left or right activists that are on there screaming the loudest. And that's what you hear. But that isn't indicative of, of all the people. I, I, you talk to a normal person in the street, most people are like, I don't, I don't even go to Twitter. It's terrible. Yeah, a lot of people dipped out. Now, Twitter, when it first started, it wasn't that bad. It was, you know, people sharing art. Cat and videos. And cat videos and memes and stuff like that. It wasn't bad. But, you know, when Tumblr started to decline, we saw a lot of these weirdos come over from Tumblr True. and infect Twitter. And it's only been the last, like, three or four years that it's been downright unbearable. Now, I, I think the paid version might weed out some of those people, but I think the damage has already been done. I think I think a lot of people have already moved on to other things. And then this guy again. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the people I know at the big two now. Basically, I don't believe you. Yes, I'm trying to yes. discredit you because I'm me and I I'm special. But even even if he's right, even if he's right, and it's twenty percent, twenty percent of your potential audience, twenty percent are on Twitter, and of that, half of them probably don't have. Don't you aren't even active, or they might be sock puppet accounts. So ten percent will say, um, you know, you're back to ten percent, dude, and that's still a tiny percentage of your 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 audience you're selling to, and books are not selling. The takeaway is people don't like the direction you're going. It's not that hard to figure out. No, I don't know why you're like looking at everything. It's staring you right in the face, no matter which way you turn. It's right staring you in the face, and you keep trying to attribute it to something else. Um, it's not that hard to figure out. Yeah, I mean, it's like the comic book industry is learning this entirely too late. And they're like, why are these, why are these pesky YouTubers making so much money? Because they uh, speak, for, they speak more for the general public than you do. Yeah, it's like they found where the actual comic book buying 
customers are. They're not on Twitter. They're on YouTube. Uh, they're on other social media. They're on Facebook. And what's funny to me is when these these creators that that you know keep pandering, try to go to Twitter. It doesn't work for them because people don't. They already are discredited because they're like, we already know what where you, where you stand. You're not for the quality of people. You're for for pandering to Twitter. Yeah. And we're not going to listen to you because you're not trying to sell books. You're trying to you know get yourself a, a deal or whatever. Yeah. So this is. Uh, I think. I think people are starting to realize where the North American comic book industry actually is. And it, it pretty much is where it's been since 1990s, where uh, the corporate corporate comic publishers don't care about you personally. You know, they're strip mining comics for IP. And uh, when they're done with comics, they'll just discard the husk of what was left of the industry. And also the people you're pandering to, they're not gonna save comics because they're not on the social media platforms you mm -hmm. think they are. Right, and and all you're doing is making these decisions based on the people that screamed the loudest on Twitter, and yeah. and I, and that's when your sales started tanking like crazy. Maybe, maybe the takeaway is we should start making characters like they were before, um, make diverse characters because they always were diverse characters, and you know just start making them more like themselves instead of changing them just for whatever woke points we can get on Twitter, and maybe then you'll sell books more. Maybe, and then maybe, maybe you you can pay your creators better. They won't. Those kids. No, they won't. <laughs> they will not. Uh, so there we go, guys. That is kind of the state of uh, North American comics 2021. It is absolutely declining. We're going to do another video talking about how sad it looks compared to manga. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.